I was thinking this week about how strategic God is in who he calls and how uh, specific he is, um, even in choosing you and me, that, um, that you are handpicked, that he loves you. If you've believed on the Lord as your savior, that he loves you and he's specific about you. Um, and he has uh, a specific plan uh, and, and a strategic plan about um, your life in Christ. So he loves you and he has that plan uh, settled for you and for me. And it's being worked out. It's being worked out. And so the amazing thing is that when we understand that, uh, he gives us the freedom to choose to seek him with all of our heart. And that's when we find that, that groove that, that in the spirit that we know that we're uh, following him with all that we have. And so um, the reason I'm talking about this is this. This is the uh, second week that we started in the story about Cornelius, right? And so um, what I was seeing is that um, God has called each one of us in a, uh, maybe a different way. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I talked about maybe uh, you were at a gathering like this or you were at a youth gathering and, uh, and the Holy Spirit just prompted you to give your life to the Lord and you went forward and you gave your life to the Lord. Or for some of you, it could have been um, uh, you were headed in the wrong direction and you were running as fast as you could go and maybe you had like a Saul conversion where the Lord just stopped you in your tracks and you said, I'm going to follow the Lord. And so maybe that was it for you, that you were bad. You were, you were bad and God just uh, grabbed hold of you and he called you into his family. Uh, another uh, example could be, talked about this last week a little bit, that um, uh, maybe uh, you saw an amazing miracle. Maybe something happened and that's what drew you into the kingdom. That's what God used. Um, and then there's some of you that you grew up in a Christian home and maybe God used kind of like a butterfly net. You were always, already leaning into believing in God and he just kind of scooped you up and you believed with your dad and mom and scooped you up and just kind of led you through prayers and maybe going to church and then one day you realized that he was calling you personally and, and you responded. So um, maybe that happened. And uh, so we came through uh, the Ethiopian uh, uh, eunuch. We came through his story, remember? And he for some reason, God was calling him. It was a strategic plan for him. Uh, he, was, um, he was at worship in Jerusalem, was not a Jewish person. He was at worship, and somehow he had the word of God, and uh, he was reading out of Isaiah. Uh, he had that scroll, and uh, God used Philip to come alongside and um, to explain who that was, and he came to know Jesus. Um, so... Maybe for you, you were reading God's word. And I've heard stories about people that are trying to uh, refute the Bible and they get into reading it and all of a sudden the, the Holy Spirit just illuminates the word and they go, what? And they believe because they've been reading. And, you know, uh, Gideons understand that, right? The group of men that go about making sure the Bible is in these places so that when God is near somebody and they open up the word, there's an avenue for for God. Isn't that amazing? So maybe that was you. You were reading, you were just playing around, reading God's word, and, and he spoke to you. Um, and so that was what happened to the Ethiopian, and, and God just used a butterfly net on him, it seems like. Um, and then we get Cornelius. He's this uh, commander, and he has over 600 men under him, and uh, he's not Jewish, but He's, he's been leaning something, somehow the Holy Spirit's been calling him in and he will be the first Gentile that comes into the kingdom of God. But God is calling him a strategic plan, specific plan for him. 
But here he is, he's, he's giving to um, the Jewish people. He's a, he's, a, he's a giver and he's a lover of God and he's praying and he's fasting and his whole household, but he doesn't know Jesus yet. But, but he's praying and God uh, sends an angelic messenger in the way of a vision to bring him in. And so we're right in the middle of that story that then God uses people to help this process to happen. He used Philip to help the Ethiopian, and he's going to use Peter, we're going to see today, to, to help Cornelius. And guess what? If you believe in the Lord Jesus, he is using you in some way. Maybe it won't be uh, uh, sharing the full gospel, but maybe it's, it started out with a smile, and maybe, but somehow... He's specific about who you are because he has a love plan for you and he's strategic about who you are and where you are in his plan. Okay, so we're in chapter 10 of Acts. So open up to chapter 10 of Acts. So um, we get to see kind of behind the scenes of what God is doing. I need to take my music off here. Um, And so uh, Cornelius has this vision, and he's told um, by this messenger to go send for Peter. And so um, it's kind of like, and while that's going on, we get to back at the ranch type of thing. While this is going on, something else is going on that God is, is doing more than one thing at a time here. So while he's having this vision, um, uh, Peter is in uh, Yope or Joppa and he's there and he ends up with a vision. And so uh, God is has awakened Cornelius with the vision to go send for him. And now Peter, so we get to see this uh, amazing display of God orchestrating his plan. Okay. Um, So in verse nine, we're in verse nine, chapter 10, verse nine of Acts. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near to the city, uh, Peter went up on the house top to pray, and it was about the sixth hour, and that would be about three in the afternoon. Do you remember when Cornelius was praying? It was the uh, was it the ninth hour uh, that he was praying, and he has this vision. Well, so so Peter's praying, and something is about to happen. So he goes up there. It's about the sixth hour. Uh, he became hungry and he wanted to eat. And while they were making ready, he fell into a trance. Um, and he has this vision. So while he's there praying and while he's waiting, um, this is happening. And I was thinking of while you are doing something, maybe while you are praying or while you're at work or while you are engaged in your life somewhere, um, God is wanting to lead you by his Holy Spirit while you are there. So watch what happens. So While he was there, verse 11 then, he saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at four corners descending uh, to him and let down to the earth. Verse 12, and in it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, and this is what it said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Verse 16. This was done three times and the object was taken up into heaven. Now, um, uh, like me, like you, you probably wondered, 
how could Peter uh, make that kind of statement? Well, um, this was breaking all the rules that they had known about what was commanded to them uh, in, the, in the scriptures about uh, food that they were supposed to stay away from. So let's take a look at that real quick. Travel back in your Old Testament uh, and let's go to Leviticus chapter 20. So uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus chapter 20. And so here are the laws being set down. Leviticus chapter 20. And we're going to look at 22. Um, it just, just in that verse there, it says, And you shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and perform that in the land where I'm bringing you to dwell. Uh, in the land I'm bringing you to dwell may not vomit you out. You shall not walk in the statutes of the nation which I am casting out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhor them. Verse 24. But I said to you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give to you uh, to possess a land flowing with milk and honey, and I am the Lord your God who has separated you from the people. You shall therefore distinguish between clean animals and unclean animals. Excuse me. <clears throat> Between unclean birds and clean, and you shall not make yourselves uh, abominable by beast or by bird or any kind of living thing that creeps on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. Verse 26. And you shall be holy to me, for I am the Lord. I, the Lord, am holy, and I have separated you from the peoples that you should be mine. So no wonder Peter said, um, no, <laughs> no. He knew this. Uh, another scripture, uh, Deuteronomy. So we're in Leviticus. So uh, take a right-hand turn and go past Numbers and Deuteronomy. And what does it say in Deuteronomy chapter 14? Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 14, uh, 1 through 3. You are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourself nor shave the front of your head for the dead. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. And then he starts into, you shall not eat any detestable thing. And he starts naming the things that they can eat and they can't eat. And the whole reason he's saying is you're separated from uh, the world around you. You are special to me. And so this is a way to show that you are holy unto me. So no wonder Peter said he sees this vision and he can't figure it out. And it goes on to say he's pondering it. And it's like, no. And I wondered about that for you and for me, that at times when um, something so important, um, we're being asked to do something different, to, to change. Uh, so important. Uh, and so Peter would do this. But I think about some of the things we think are so important, like, for instance, the way we do church. Um, is it more holy to have a, a center aisle or to have two aisles over here? Uh, is it holy to have an organ or a piano or a guitar or, you know, what is it? It's like, no, uh, don't change that. This is, we're holy people. This is a church. This is how we do church. You know where I'm going? It's just kind of like, there's some things in our lives, I believe, that at times God may be telling us, you need to rearrange the way you do things. But we might think of them as, no, this is a tradition. This is what I've always done. This is the way it's going to be. We're going to walk the sawdust trail. We're going to do what Billy Graham did. You know, it's like, so uh, that started getting at me and making me think this week, what are some things that I'm holding on to that I, God has really used, but maybe it's, maybe there's a new season and I need to let go of, of one way that I've done done something but 
This, this is crazy different. This is, this is like, this is what they were commanded to do. And here's this vision saying, take and eat. And God says, what, what I've made clean, but just like what God does is he's taking, he's taking a picture and he's making a deeper meaning to come out of this. And what will come out of this is that he's going to end up talking about the Gentiles are going to come in to the kingdom of God, that they too will be made holy through Jesus Christ. And so, so it's not about the food after all. <laughs> There's something deeper going on. And I do believe that every single day, God has something deeper going on than just us eating and drinking and getting these physical bodies to do what we need to do. There's something else that he's looking for. So here's Peter saying, saying no. So while, we're going to pick up at verse 17. So while Peter wandered within himself, what this vision which he had seen meant. So while he was doing that, the, the men that showed up that Cornelius sent, right? So while, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry at Simeon's or Simon's house and, and stood before the gate. And they called and they asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. So now behind the scenes again, we get, God orchestrating Cornelius here. Peter's having this vision right at this time when these men are showing up. Um, God is doing something to um, get hold of Peter and to use Peter. Specific, strategic, the choosing of uh, Cornelius, the choosing of Peter, the choosing of you. Strategic, specific, his love plan is being worked out in each of our lives if you've believed on the Lord Jesus. So there's this thing that I've, I've, that I've been working through over this last month of when we come to Christ, there's this calling that he's doing it and we're responding. But it seems like there's an everyday calling and it kind of goes like this. First, he gets your attention if, if not unto salvation, just every day. He gets your attention somehow. And then he begins to instruct you. And maybe that's in your morning devotion time. And then he gives you an assignment. And then he gives you the power to do the assignment. And then he gives you the timing of when to do it. I believe that happens over and over again when we're seeking God with all of our heart that he, he is doing this. He's, he's getting our attention He's beginning to instruct us. He's giving us an assignment. And then he's given us the power through the Holy Spirit to do the assignment. And then he gives us the timing. And what we're seeing here, unwrap here, is all that coming together. All that coming together. And as I look out here, I see that um, there's years have gone by for some of you. you used, maybe you used to be a Sunday school teacher and now you're doing something different. You have another assignment and God has been leading you and and many of you haven't been at this church before. And, you know, and there's some here that have been here uh, for 40 some years. And so, but God's strategic in your life and, and where you are in that assignment even today. So as the message comes to a close, I'm wondering if the Holy Spirit is going to make, um, give you an assignment and maybe uh, confirm an assignment that you've, He's already been sharing with you because your assignment is going to interact with somebody else's life. They either are going to come to Christ or there's somebody else that you need to encourage, um, but it's specific for you. It's your, your job that he's given you specifically. Okay, so here's Peter. He's wondering about this. They came and they asked about him. Uh, where is he? So then it goes back to Peter. He's up on the roof again where he is. And it says there in 19, while Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit says to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Okay? So the Spirit gave him a specific instruction. Here's what's going on. I have sent them. 
Don't, don't wonder anymore. <laughs> Just do this. Just do this. While there. Um, so don't doubt. Don't doubt this, even the specific uh, timing, but don't doubt. And th- there's, again, just applying this, that there's times when we don't quite understand why we're doing what we're doing, but God has a specific timing, a specific plan for you to be engaged in it. So Peter then, he goes down in verse 21, he goes down to the men who had sent, was sent by him from Cornelius, and he said, yes, I am whom you seek. For what reason have you come? Verse 22. They said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one whom fear, who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by holy angels, by a holy angel, to summon you to his house and to hear the words from you. There it is. Peter, <laughs> you are on assignment. They're coming to hear the words from you. So it says then, he invited them in, lodged them, and the next day Peter went away with them and some of the brethren from Yope or Joppa accompanied him. Okay. So what's happening? There's a grand plan that was prophesied to happen that God's people um, would be the chosen people and they would, they would help all the Gentiles come to understand the one and true and living God, that he would use uh, this chosen people. And then we've become the chosen people along with them. We've been grafted in to be a part of that, drawing um, all, of the, all of the world to God, that there's an opening, there's a way. So in uh, Genesis 12, 3, it talks about, and you will be a blessing, um, you will be a blessing to all the nations. And then in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus himself says, go and make disciples. And so he's commanding them to go. And so um, specific assignment, specific job. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. So it's a narrow way, but it's the only way. Unless you profess Jesus as Lord and Savior, you miss the path. And that's why you are so special and specific for God's plan, is that you are about helping people to find that narrow way. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way and difficult is the way. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life. Life. And during those times in crisis is when the compassion from God through you can help people to find that that way to life eternal. 